Hello. Um, I want to share today. I'm on a Warner. Hi. I just want to share with you about something that is not very popularly um, spoken about, and that's the subject of suffering. Um, and I, this is me just, you know, it's one thing to talk about healing and suffering when you are on the other side. Amen. But I'm still recovering. So I'm actually speaking um, and prophesying to my own body that will be completely healed. But I want to share um, my story with you because so many people write me all the time um, needing healing. And I pray for people. I love to do healing ministry. Like that's, I love it. Um, and I want to share with you something that I just went through um, personally and kind of what my journey with that was because I think it would just encourage uh, maybe you. Maybe we'll see what God does. So Holy Spirit, I just ask you to come right now and just have your way. I pray for all the technology to work in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Um, so here's my story. That's kind of crazy, guys. I recently... It was about um, a, a week ago. I um, went, took my kids. We had a normal day. I took my kids to the library, and the public library. And um, I got home, and it just was like, wow, my neck feels really itchy, like after lunch. And I ate all this different food that I normally don't eat, stuff with sesame seed and nuts and stuff. Anyway, my throat was really itchy, and I was just kind of like, huh, just like itching it, not really paying attention, you know? And then um, by that evening, I was broken out in hives, head to toe, and extremely uncomfortable, like super itchy, super painful, because um, I was itching and I was just, oh, I was just in so much pain. My whole body like basically went into pain mode where it was just like, I don't know if it was in shock or whatever, but all my nerves just felt really agitated and inflamed and everything hurt, like everything touching me hurt, my kids jumping on me hurt, you know, everything. I was just like, nobody touch me. <laughs> so, um, that, and so we were kind of just watching it, praying through it, my husband, me, and I was, I took Benadryl, I think, to try and get the, you know, because I was like, maybe I'm having an allergic reaction to something I ate, praying through it, um, trying to figure out what this was. And then... We, um, the next day, so I woke up and it was worse. It was so much worse. It was spread to my eyes. Like my eyes were hived and swollen. And then my lips, which it's still kind of healing right here, but my lips were completely, um, swollen and numb, like going numb. And I'm like, okay, this is not good. Like this is probably where I need to go see a doctor. Um, cause I... I use my voice all the time and my eyes. So this is a real attack. And so it's like, I need to go see a doctor. So I went to go see a doctor. Run all these tests on me and they're like, wow, we have no idea what you have. You have um, airborne po been airborne poisoned. Whatever that means. They Basically, they didn't know. They're like, this isn't poison ivy. This isn't poison oak. You're not having a food reaction because of like how the hives looked or whatever. It's not a food reaction. Basically, you came into contact with something mysterious in the air and you've been poisoned and your body is hypervigilantly like reacting. And um, we need to get you on like all this kind of medication um, like ASAP or you're going to the hospital. And I'm like, well, airborne poisoning. I know what that sounds like. So I turned to her and I said, well, that's a demonic attack. And she said, okay, well, demonic attack or not, you need a lot of steroids. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> so, um, got home, started all this medication and, um, for something that is unknown, like nobody really knows what it was. I personally do feel like it was such an attack on me, um, as a seer prophetess because here, especially it was attacking my eyes and my mouth and I'm like, I use all of those for the kingdom of God all the time. Um, so this pain went on and on and on for like a week. And then I started to get better and praying through it. And um, then I stood up one day. Like I just literally stood up. I didn't do anything else. I stood up and I threw my back out. Like completely out. That was on Friday. And um, 
it was uh, really, like I couldn't even move. It was so bad. I was just out, like completely out at that point with ice um, on my back and I couldn't move. So here's my story. You're like, why are you sharing all this pain with me? Here I share it because I'm in that place. And this just happened. This is present. I, you know, my back's better. I'll, I'll share what happened, but I'm in that place where I'm completely broken out in heights, head to toe. My body looks like a tomato, bubbled tomato. I can't see really well. I'm losing feeling in my mouth. And my back is excruciating. Can't even move. And I remembered that moment laying there and I remember saying this and I just want to share this with you because I feel like somebody's probably going through this right now where you're maybe you're not with that circumstance but you're in pain you're suffering when I was in that moment I kept saying to myself and I had to choose this honestly I kept having to say I will not be offended and I had, like, there were so many times I said that in, in tears. I was like, I'm not going to be offended. The, the enemy sucks. I know that he's coming against me right now. I know this is a demonic assignment. Not everything's a demonic assignment, but I really felt like this was a demonic attack. And I had heard that from the Lord. Um, and I just was like, this sucks. And this has to go. But in this place, when I'm there on my back laying and I can't move, I'm in pain. I will praise you, God. I will praise you, God. And I will I will set my mind to refuse to be offended right now because you are good. And I, um, now let me tell you another story that why you're going, why would you share this? But I had this story of something that happened to my husband and me a while back, actually, that set me up for this moment to choose not to be offended because I remembered this in this moment. So when my husband and me first got back from Nepal, we'd been missionaries overseas. We moved back here to Kansas City, Missouri. We had nothing. We had no money, no house, no anywhere, no car, no anything. And we basically lived with my in-loves and um, call them in-loves, not in-laws, in-loves. I lived with them. We lived with them, and which was awesome. They helped us. And um, then the Lord, it was a miracle of God, gave us this car. It was like a blessing because here we needed to get around and we couldn't get around and gave us a car. And it was amazing. It was exactly like what we had prayed for. It was such a blessing. And then one night, so we, here we got this car, and then it was right before Thanksgiving, we were going to, um, we we're, it was literally like maybe six days or seven days before we were leaving, we were going to go on a trip to California, and um, our car that was on our driveway, our blessing, they call it, our blessing that was on our driveway, and our driveway was right outside our bedroom window, like our bedroom window faced the driveway. In the middle of the night, was stolen right off our driveway and both me and my husband didn't hear a thing like we didn't hear anything at all and it turns out they think they use like a lift or something like professional movers I don't know they stole our car Sam wakes up the next morning he goes out and he's like um he comes back in and he goes did you like park the car somewhere else last night? And I'm like, no. Why? He's like, it's gone. <laughs> I was like, what? It's gone? Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's gone. Like completely gone. Our car was gone. And um, it was the craziest thing. It turned out that, so in the middle of this, so we're, we're so sad. Like we're heartbroken. We're like, what are we going to do? We don't have any money. Buy a new car. We're leaving for California. We're dealing with police in and out, you know, of our um, our lives, just doing reports, stuff like that. They found the car two like two days before we had to leave, and it turned out it was used for hauling a meth lab 
like here in Kansas City somewhere, they found it. Methamphetamines, drugs, alcohol, crazy. And we had to get it all oxidized, clean, head to toe and everything. Big police stuff. We got our car back. But during that time, now we got our car back, but we had to pay. <laughs> I think we had to pay like 600 bucks. For us at the time, 600 bucks was like, Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? You know, because we, we didn't have any money. We were like, what are we going to do? That's a lot of money for some people. It, uh, for us at the time, it was a lot. Um, God came through, but I remember it was like, okay, God, you've got to help us. But when we were going through that, I want to say this. When we were going through that, that I'll never forget that moment when both me and Sam realized our car had been stolen. And we looked outside and we felt completely devastated. I remember hearing Holy Spirit say this. I heard Holy Spirit's voice, and he said, what will be your response? And it was in that moment that I said, Sam, I remember we looked at each other, and we both said, we said, we will not be offended. We will praise God and thank him despite this. And that moment helped me this past week so much. So I just share that with you because I knew that mo like that moment. Oh, it's like thundering and lightning in here, but um, outside of me. But that moment helped me for this past week, get through this week. And it is never, and I'm not saying, I am not justifying suffering and pain in any form. Don't take it like that. Okay, it is never the Lord's intent for the enemy to do what he does sometimes. Like, he, does, the Lord doesn't want us to be in pain and suffering. That's not his heart. But your response in that moment, your response in that moment is everything. I remember this past week, I was laying there. I was laying there on my bed. I couldn't move. I was in so much pain and I was all swollen and I remember saying I love you God I love you God all the still and I'll press through the pain I kept saying I'll press through the pain and I kept you know and I'm declaring healing I'm doing everything I know to do right because I don't you know I'm saying I'll be healed in Jesus name blah, blah, blah. but the reality was I was still hurting I'm like I will press through this and I'll love you all still and I kept that old worship song, you know, in those moments, old worship songs always come back to me. And I was like, I was singing that, um, give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, oh, blessed be your name. Now I'm singing it through tears. Like this wasn't a beautiful worship moment. This was through absolute tears and pain that I'm seeing you give and take away. But the being able to praise all the still him he is good he is worthy i just want to encourage you if you're in this place of pain and suffering today he is good god and he wants you healed and whole the second thing i did that i want to share with you is i was really careful with my words and not just with other people but because that's like, obviously, I'm going to be careful what I say and everything. But instead of complaining about my body, because um, one time I was, I was just sharing with somebody, they asked, what are you going through? And I was just sharing it. And I, I felt like the, you know, I'm being honest and real with you, but I felt so frustrated. Like, why am I going through this? Like, nobody even knows. This is so demonic. What is this? I'm so much pain. I'm so sick of not, this not getting better because it wasn't really getting better. It was actually getting worse. And so I stopped and I heard Holy Spirit say, bless your body. And I was like, okay, that's a different thing. I'm going to bless my body. So I, instead of feeling frustrated and what I had felt at one point was I felt like swallowed by defeat. I don't know if that rings true for any of you, but I felt swallowed by defeat. And I just thought, I am going to bless my body. So every time I started to feel 
like absolutely frustrated at my end with this. I was like, Lord, I bless my body. I thank you body that you are being healed and whole and you are functioning how you should. You are a good body that serves me well. I bless you. And I would keep doing that over and over and over. And it kind of helped me honestly, um, a lot. Um, and then the last thing I did that I want to share to get me through this really, really hellish week was um, I used the word. The word of the word of God is our weapon. We know that. And so I want to give you some scriptures that I use personally um, this week that really helped me. And you can take them, use them. I printed them out here. So Mark 16, 17 through 18 was one that I used. I said, these signs will accompany those who believe in the name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will pick up servants, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Now, I loved that scripture, and I used it, because I'm like, whatever this is, whatever airborne, weird, whatever, it can't. this poison cannot harm me in Jesus' name. And I kept standing on that scripture. And then I used Isaiah 53.3, which we know as... Um, and by his scourging, we are healed. And a lot of times people say by his stripes, we are healed. But sometimes I like to use it in, what is this, the NASB version. It says scourging because it really depicts how quite the painful process that Jesus really went through. It doesn't, I don't know, sometimes we hear stripes so many times it just, we forget what that really means, you know. Good reminder. But we are healed. And so I kept saying, okay. By your scourging, I've been healed. That's what the word says. And then the last one I did was Psalms 91, 11 through 15 in the Passion Translation. God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling. You'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest powers of darkness, trampling every one of them beneath your feet. Come on. <laughs> for here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will greatly protect you. I'll set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. And you will find and feel my presence even in your time of pressure and trouble. I love that scripture because there's moments where I did not feel the presence, you know, of God when I was in pain. I'm like, where are you, God? You know, come on, amen. I know someone saying, yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, but it says, I will answer you every time and you'll feel my presence in your time of pressure and trouble. So I want to pray right now for you. If you find yourself in this place and you're like, I can relate to this story. And I'm, I'm trying not to be long-winded here, but if you feel yourself in this place where you're like, I am, I'm in this, on, I am suffering, I am going through it, I can totally relate to this. I want to pray for you right now because this was me this past week and I'm still not completely 100% healed. Um, I'll be real with you. Uh, my back is healed, praise God, because that became actually worse than the rash. <laughs> but... Uh, yesterday I went to bed and I said, okay, or no, Sunday night, sorry, mix up my days. Sunday night I went to bed and I said, all right, Monday is the start of my week. I am going to be healed and whole and this back will be healed. I will not wake up like this in Jesus name. And I declared that and literally it happened. I woke up and I was completely better. And then I was like, why didn't I say that? three days ago, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, um, for whatever reason, the Lord healed me then. My rash is almost gone. It's still a little bit in some areas on my body, but God is good. He is good. A rash in the, in the grand scheme of things, it's nothing. And you might not be going through nothing right now. You're going, well, a rash is a rash on us. And my heart really goes out to you. Like, I really do 
have a heart for those who are suffering and going through pain. Like I really do. And um, I just want to pray with you right now. We're in this. We, we Sometimes you just need someone to encourage you, right, when you're going through it. And I hope I can be that voice today to just say you will get through this. You press through the pain, beloved. Press through the pain. He will lift your spirit. He will lift your spirit up. I declare right now a spirit of defeat to get off anybody who's watching this who is really feeling defeated by the trial that they are going through right now. Father, I pray right now for, um, wow, just healing, healing, healing. I feel Holy Spirit right now, so I'm just going to say, I pray healing, healing, healing. Wow. Hey, to somebody's body, spine. I pray for cancer to go. I pray for tumors to be uh, melted off. I pray for leukemia to be gone in Jesus' name. I pray for somebody's kidneys, ovaries, bladder to be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for heart somebody's heart to be healed as well. Karabashu, somebody's heart that's facing surgery. I pray for that, um, a turnaround healing in Jesus' name. A quick healing. I pray actually quicken the process, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And any assignment of the enemy must fall down right now in Jesus' name. And God, we will choose myself included, we will choose to praise you. Praise you, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Despite what we're going through right now, God, we love you, love you, love you, and nothing, nothing, nothing will ever steal that or take our love away. Karabashu, we're abandoned for you, God. Here we are. Here we are. I just pray and prophesy that somebody watching this right now, you're feeling the presence of the Lord come over you. You are feeling um, heat and warmth in your body. And that's just his healing presence. It's just touching your body. Sometimes it's slow at first and you don't even realize it until you test out. And you're like, oh, my body feels, my neck's been healed. Or, ooh, someone's neck is being healed right now. I just saw a picture of a neck. So, <laughs> whosoever neck that is right now I just declare complete healing restoration and things being realigned in the neck right now in Jesus name thank you father amen thanks guys I hope this encouraged you and much love and blessings